a mass of 9 kilograms. It's connected by a light string. I'm going to assume that light is the same as massless as opposed to white because it's obviously a black string. That passes over a pulley of mass big M, which is 13.5. It's a hefty pulley. To a mass M2, sliding on a horizontal surface. Coefficient of kinetic friction. So I'm going to assume things are moving. Between mass 2 and the surface is 0 0.16. There's no slippage. So no slipping means x equals r theta, v equals r omega, a equals r alpha. What is the magnitude of the tension that is acting on mass m2? So we're going to find the tension there. Okay. And they give us a moment of inertia, which is kind of them. So we're going to draw some free body diagrams real quick and call that force gravity 1, because it's from force mass 1. I'm going to call this tension 1. Coming down is going to be tension 2. Coming, uh, no, that's going to be tension 1. To the left is going to be tension 2. Pulling the block this way is going to be tension 2. Pulling the block opposing the motion is going to be uh, force friction. And then force friction, not to get too messy here, we're going to have force gravity going down. I know it's kind of messy. Sorry. Then we're going to have force normal going up. And I just draw those because that's going to be key for finding uh, force friction. Looks complicated, not too bad. We're just going to start writing out equations here. We got this. We can do it. Go team. So starting for uh, M1, sum of all forces on mass 1 is going to be, I'm going to call it down positive. It's going to be mass 1 times gravity minus tension 1 and that's going to equal mass 1 times acceleration. Um, I'm going to jump ahead here to uh, mass 2 up here, just because I want to do all the linear first, then I'll do the angular, just to kind of keep my feng shui going. So pulling it to the right is going to be tension 2, and so this is going to be kind of like the positive direction because they're all moving together in that way. Tension 2 minus force friction. Now in this case, um, force friction is coefficient of kinetic friction. If it was not moving, it'd be static, times force normal. And if we look at all the forces on that um, block, block number 2, force normal is going to be equal to force gravity, which is mass times gravity. So I'm just going to put that in right away. Skip a few steps, I know. Um, I've done worse things in life. Uh, not too much worse, though. Skipping steps in a math problem or a physics problem is about as evil as you can get in life. So this is mass 2. Mass 2 acceleration. I'm going to use the same A here because they're connected by a string. Um, it doesn't say that it's a taut string, but we're going to assume that string is taut without stretching. So the accelerations are all the same. Now we're going to go for the um, all the torques on the pulley. So the torque, sum of all torques, equals moment of inertia times alpha. And each individual torque is going to be RF. Now the R is going to be from the center of the pulley to the to the outside of the pulley to its to the edge. And the force in this case is going to be the tension. Oh, these should actually be R cross F. These are vectors. Um, the cross product is a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are. And since the radius from the inside to where the string touches is going to be perpendicular to the tension, which is either straight down or straight horizontal, that's going to be perfectly perpendicular. So in this case, it's just going to be RF, or, in this, or specifically, radius times tension. So this is going to be um, torque 1, which is rotating it downward, is going to be R tension 1 minus R tension 2. 
And that's going to equal moment of inertia, which is 1 half mr squared, 1 half. I'm going to call this um, mp for pulley. I know they just use big M, which is perfectly fine. I just don't want to. I'm going to call this m pulley. Ignore that random blue dot times r squared. And now we need alpha, rearranging our relationship between linear and angular. We get alpha equals a over r. So we can rewrite alpha, this alpha right here that we're plugging in over here, because this is i, moment of inertia. This is alpha. It's going to be a divided by r. There we go. Get some orange for better contrast. One of those R's cancels, the other R cancels, and we are left with tension 1 minus tension 2 equals 1 half times the mass of the pulley times the acceleration of the system. And this is the same A for all of them. Yes, I think we're good here. I think we're good. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these equations. I'm going to look at that equation, that equation, and that equation, and I'm literally just going to add them all together. So on the left side, we get mass 1 times gravity minus tension 1 plus tension 2 minus coefficient of kinetic friction times mass 2 times gravity plus tension 1 minus tension 2. Now that's the whole left side of this equation, of all these three equations added together. And now I'm going to add up all the right sides, except I'm going to factor out the acceleration just because I can. So we get A times mass 1 plus A times mass 2 plus A times 1 half mass pulley. Um, looking at these, I can see that the tensions all cancel out. So tension 1, tension 1, tension 2, tension 2. Solving for acceleration, I am going to get mass 1 times gravity minus coefficient of kinetic friction times mass 2 also times gravity, so I could probably factor out the gravity. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Oop, I know, terrible boardsmanship. That's okay. You will get over it. Divided by the sum of all masses, plus the moment of inertia, sort of. Mass 1 plus mass 2 plus 1 half mass pulling. Putting numbers into this and getting a calculator Let's see here. Yes. I'm going to come up here, grab my calculator. We have 9.81 times quantity divided by quantity. The top quantity is the mass 1, which is 9, minus the coefficient of friction, which is 0.16 times mass 2, which is 10, divided by 9 plus 10 plus 13.5, divided by 2. Yeah, it looks reasonable. And I get an answer of 2.82. Um, one key thing to note here is that this answer is less 2.82 less than 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, it would be unreasonable for this block to fall faster than gravity. So it makes sense. It's kind of a good check to be like, okay, it's falling slower than gravity. Might be correct. Now they don't care about the acceleration. They want tension 2 right up here. That's what we need. So we're going to go back to our equations, find the one that has tension 2 in it. So this equation right here, we're going to take it down over here 
And now this equation only has one unknown in it. Um, I'm going to rewrite it. Um, orange. Tension 2 is mass 2 times equation, acceleration, plus coefficient of kinetic friction times gravity. Yeah, maybe that seems reasonable. So mass 2, I think it's 10. Mass 2 is 10. So we're going to have 10 times a quantity 2.82 plus 0.16 times 9.81. 0.16 is the kinetic coefficient of friction. I mean the coefficient of friction when something is moving. So we got this, got that. Now we need to calculator it. I'm going to use my preferred calculator of Wolfram, but you can use your, your calculator of choice, um, probably a TI-83 or some such. 2.82 plus 0.16 times 9.81. That seems reasonable. And I get an answer of 43.9 newtons. So let's see here. Yep, I'm good with that. So kind of to go back and explain what we did here, because I know that's a lot. Um, this is an Atwood machine. The idea is you have a couple blocks connected by a pulley, and they're going to have a common acceleration. And so we draw free body diagrams for each of the blocks and the pulley. The blocks have are affected. The first one is affected by gravity and tension one pulling up. The second one is affected by friction, pulling it opposing the motion, and then tension two, which is pulling it forward. And then the pulley has opposing tensions, one, uh, tension one pulling down and tension two pulling it back. And so we can write up an equation for each of those. We do force equals ma, some of all forces is mass times acceleration for blocks one and two. And then for the pulley, we do the sum of all torques equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Exact same formula, well, exact same concept, just applied angular instead of linear. Um, we do a whole bunch of math. We basically set everything up so we could just add the three systems of equations to, to together. Uh, tension one, tension two, all canceled out, found our acceleration, and then we went back and found a specific uh, equation that had tension two in it, plugged back in our acceleration, and bam, we get an answer at 43.9 newtons. Hope that helped. See you next time.